evening. I'd like to call to order the April 23rd, 2015 regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District. We'll start with roll call. Dave Nelson. Here. Charlie Anderson. Here. Nick Rico. Here. Ben Viola. Here. Rob McSorley. Here. Seth Garrison is absent this evening, and I am Chairman Jason Greenleaf. Uh, next would be the approval of the March 26, 2015 regular monthly meeting minutes. Move approval. Seconded. Any errors or omissions? I had already given Madam Secretary. Okay. With that, all in favor of approval? I'm abstaining. I wasn't here last month. One abstention. <laughs> <from Nick. laughs> And I'll turn it over to Dave for the Superintendent and Operations Report. Okay, thank you. Um, the uh, monthly report of operations, a copy of which was included in your packet for the month of March. Our average effluent was 1.34 million gallons per day. Our effluent quality, again, was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 92% re removal for uh, biological chemical, uh, biochemical oxygen demand and 97% removal for a total suspended solids. Uh, the averages were 16 milligrams per liter and 8 milligrams per liter, respectfully. A copy of the pump station flows for the month of March is included in your packet, and there were no items noted with that. Um, Rudy Hale is, has been attending the JETSI uh, Introduction to Wastewater Treatment course. This is the sixth session course. It concluded this uh, past uh, Tuesday uh, with uh, um, uh, one of our trustees here making the final presentation, uh, Mr. Rico, uh, to, to uh, the trainees, and uh, it was reported that he did a very good job. Uh, the, recently, we've had several plugged pumps at the Postal Way pump station. Uh, we're in the processing of identifying the source, and once that, uh, that is done, I'll have a conversation with that facility to get that issue resolved. We've been pilot testing a new polymer pump to replace our aging equipment. The pump has performed well and it is likely that we will move forward with purchasing this equipment. This has, was a uh, budgeted item for this year. Uh, I have executed the agreement with William Kern to complete the uh, budgeted SCADA upgrades and they're starting to move forward with that. And I've also executed the contract with Ted Berry Company to proceed with the uh, Closed caption TV inspection of the Higgins Beach sewer system. I'll be following up with a mailer to the homeowners in the area prior to the work taking place. Uh, the two new district trucks have been delivered um, and have been fitted out with the needed equipment. And uh, uh, one is currently in service, and the second one is, is uh, ready to be delivered. It may have been delivered today, actually. Um, I've included in your packet the uh, 2015 Main Utility Rate Survey update. This was organized by Howard Carter of SACO and with the assistance of 22 other communities. It provides a brief comparison between these communities with regards to rates, debt, and future needs. As shown in the survey, typical residen residential rates range from a low of $357 per year uh, for a typical residential user to a high of $955 per year. Um, the Scarborough Sanitary District's annual resident, residential sewer bill is um, on the low side of that at $396 per year. Um, copies of uh, the annual audit and the annual report, I have um, put copies of these reports on our website under the annual reports tab, um, so they're now available for for the public to easily access and uh, review. Um, Knowles Industrial Service is scheduled to start the rehab work on the primary clarifiers. Well, they were scheduled to start on the 20th. Unfortunately, we still have some ice in those clarifiers, so that's been bumped out uh, a week. Um, so this, this work includes the painting of all the mechanical, mechanical equipment in the clarifiers. Again, this was also a budgeted item. As you may recall, during our last DEP inspection, Matt Height noted that he would be returning to conduct an inspection to verify that a stormwater permit was not needed for the wastewater treatment facility. In preparation with this meeting, I met with Aubrey Strauss of Verdant Water, who conducted a site walk and inspection in that regard. He had a couple suggestions, one being preparation of a site-specific stormwater pollution prevention plan. Um, 
and I will be working with her to implement uh, this specific recommendation. It's something that uh, will go a long way to help working with DEP on that. Um, one note is Paul Fransko, I had reached out with him, to him for one item and come to find out he has retired. Uh, he does come in on a periodic basis to check voicemails, but um, his voicemails are actually being forwarded to other uh, attorneys in the office. And I have a couple other items to talk about. Um, we had a, um, a couple incidences this past Monday. We had a pump station go into uh, the level control system failed on us on Monday, which caused a uh, surcharge of the Pine, um, Pine Point sewer system, uh, which resulted in an over, uh, a, a um, sanitary sewer overflow into the basement of 7 Avenue 7 and also on Snows Canning Road. Uh, the operators were able to get that pump station back online, but when it got, was placed back online, um, pump station two, uh, the downstream pump station from pump station one had a, uh, both pl pumps ended up uh, plugging and we ended up having an overflow at that pump station. Uh, the operators were right in the area. They were able to get uh, the station shut down right away. We um, and septage hull is on site very quickly and we're able to get it under control um, in very short order. Um, and the, uh, we got the both stations back online uh, right around noontime that day. I want to commend um, uh, Scott Curran who was on call for the first time, his first time. So this was uh, baptism by fire in his case and he did a very, very good job. He called me. I called in Glenn right away, and then he also called me. And um, the rest, we had um, three other staff, Gary Howard and Carl Tucker, uh, also came on site to address the situation and get everything back online. So the staff really came came to bat and uh, worked hard. On, uh, Who was the on call? Was Scott. 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 Oh. Scott. Yep. Wow. Uh, let's see. Today I actually uh, attended a energy efficiency um, uh, conference right here in Portland and it, it was something that was talking about um, um, efficiency main, uh, uh, how to control electrical demand charges, alter alternative energies including solar, um, it was um, co-generation. Some, some of the items discussed weren't relevant for us but there, the energy demand piece and the uh, and, uh, efficiency main items are very good sessions to attend. Um, let's see what else. Oh, uh, Pine Point Bridge, the DEP project uh, is moving forward. I have a plan, I have a meeting scheduled next Friday with DEP. I worked with Weston and Sampson to evaluate our alternatives with regards to our sewer system, uh, our, both our gravity main and our force main in that area and we, we, we looked at um, ultimately I think it was six different alternatives of moving uh, moving and re relocating our force main or in, in gravity and ultimately it, um, the, the option that I'm going to move forward with is actually keeping everything in place uh, where it is and um, just having it within the uh, the uh, the berm that is going to be ad adjacent to the uh, uh, the new bridge. Um, it does put our sewer a little bit deep, but uh, I will be uh, TVing the, uh, the gravity sewer to make sure it's in uh, the condition is in good shape. But all the other alternatives were um, had other reasons not to move forward with them. So uh, that's the best alternative that I could identify. And the last item I wanted to bring up is Francine Libby. Uh, we hired, uh, she's completed her first year uh, with us and um, I can only um, praise for the work that she has been doing at the facility. She's, I mean, she's been a pleasure to have at the plant. She's, um, and I look forward to her, her continuing with us. And that is all I have. Great. Thanks, Dave. Good questions for the superintendent? Oh. So with Paul Fransco leaving, we'll be assigned another attorney that will 
Yeah, um, uh, the, uh, I can't think of her name right now, who called me back, but I've actually worked, have, uh, I know her from uh, previous work I've done with uh, Bernstein Shore, and uh, so she, her focus is on the financial side for the uh, um, municipalities and districts. I had actually was, I had forwarded on the, um, the investment policies uh, to her and was talking to her with regard. I wanted to get their recommendations with regards to that. That's her focus right now. But she will be our yeah. contact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Um, the uh, problem with the postal way pumps were those wipes or what was the they, they are wipes. Um, they're actually Neutrogena facial wipes. <laughs> we. We've uh, been able to identify them. Um, so we're, we now have um, potato diggers going. Uh, we're putting them out in the, in the manholes to catch them, at, uh, to try to catch them at the various locations so we can isolate where they're coming from. Okay. So. Um, on the multi sector permit, are we. Is that necessary? Have we we don't know yet. We still don't know. Yeah, uh, that the the determination ultimately is going to come from DEP, mm -hmm. um, but the uh, the uh, what is site specific stormwater pollution prevention plan is something that she uh, that she strongly recommend we have either way. So yeah, you could do it. I don't know if you need it as elaborate as a multi sector would be required, but I think it's a good operating and maintenance thing. Um, on Monday, were there any other problems from all the water we had? No, no. The the, the rain. Uh, this all occurred before the rain, uh, and we had no issues with the cover, you know our flows increased, but we didn't have any issues. The flows definitely the went up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Carl, yeah, just following up on the instance incident at Pump Station One and Two. Um, the report said that they reset the, the level transducer that had failed. Mm -hmm. Had they replaced it, or did they have to just reset they it? Were able, that day, they were able to reset it, and it started to function. They, they powered down the entire uh, pump station and repowered it back up, and the, the, the unit came back to life and, and started to, to function. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually had budgeted replacement of that unit for this year. It hasn't given us any... Um, any problems up until recently, but we were we're uh, trying to get get ahead of any problems that may come up. So we have a unit on hand, and I actually think Carl had was planning on putting it in today, so it could already be in place. So, um, do we think there was some kind of a power surge or something that that affected the unit, or is it just the age of the unit? You know, where we lost both, we have um, redundant. Uh, well, we have a, the primary control system, and then we have a redundant high-level backup alarm. Um, where we lost both of them, I have a funny feeling we must have gotten some type of power surge that took both of them out. Mm -hmm. um, so do, do we need to look at some additional protection on those circuits to minimize the potential of that happening if the power fluctuation is the source of the issue or are there, is there some kind of surge protection there already? Well, with the newer, with the new float that he's putting in, he, he's, um, he is putting in some type of protect, protection for it. The, the one that was there was uh, directly wired at 120 volts, so. And um, at pump station two, um, where we had two pumps that were plugged, um, would there have been a pump failure alarm on the first pump when it plugged? They did get a pump failure alarm, uh, on, and then the second one plugged uh, apparently right immediately right after it. Um, that's a station that has historically had, over 11 years, Carl uh, said he's unplugged the pump twice there up until the other day. Mm -hmm. um, but the only thing that we can speculate is when pump station one was put back online and the two pumps came on, you know, it was such a hard rush of flow, it, it must have pushed down a concentrated amount of 
solids that that play, inadvertently plug those two pumps immediately. Mm -hmm. But we did the, the operators got an alarm right away. Um, yeah, that's that's all I have. Good. Any other questions, comments? Nope. All Good. right. Uh, next two items on the agenda: correspondence and old business. There are none. Moving on to new business: Six Libby Street, Quit Clan Bean. This is for the release of a lien the district had placed on this parcel in 1976. The parcel is being sold. And the title company found that this lien had never been released. The lien should have been released for no monies are owed. I recommend approval to authorize our tre treasurer to execute the documents relating to the release and discharge of this lien. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions? Um, would this lien have been for construction levy assessment against the property? Yeah, that's exactly. No other questions? All in favor of approval? Next item is the three-month budget summary ending March 31st, 2015. Uh, the three-month budget summary is included in your packet, and I recommend approval. So moved. Second. Questions on the budget? Just one. Yes, Charlie. Um, we had one item, um, interest payments, where we Year-to-date actual was 94,000. The year-to-date budget was 36,000. Is that just a payment schedule issue? We we don't have unanticipated interest that we're paying. It's schedule. So we've just paid the interest payment ahead of next month. How we got the the booking of it? Okay. Thank you. Oh yes, Nick. Mr. Chairman, I was wondering about the capital improvement expenditures. We're only at about 12%. Is a good portion of that the SCADA upgrade, or is it just bills for the trucks not coming in, or? Well, they're not all in. Um, some of the SCADA upgrades, there was monies budgeted for the Pine Point Bridge. Oh, that's um, right. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, there was monies budgeted for um, uh, some pumps. Mm -hmm. And then fellows, uh, so there's a, a variety of items that that, that, okay. that covers. Um, by the way, I should mention the alternative uh, that I was recommending with regards to the Pine Point Bridge is also the cheapest alternative. So um, we will, there'll be some modifications that we'll have to make, but we won't come nearly to expending what we had budgeted for on that item. Good to know. There's no other questions. All in favor of approval of the three month budget summary. All right. Next is public comments. We do not have any public with us this evening. So I will start off on my left with trustee comments with Ben. I have no comments this month. Thank you. Nick? Uh, just a few. First, uh, it was a pleasure to have Rudy in the class. Good luck on your test, Rudy. Uh, second, congratulations to Francine on her first anniversary. Congratulations to Mr. Francisco for or on his retirement. Um, and you know, kudos to Scott and the rest of the crew uh, going on call for the first time and getting not one but two pump stations go down is truly baptism by fire or wastewater, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, we may want to rethink putting him on calling. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to rethink that. Um, and then on a somber note, I wanted to issue my condolences to the Wiley family. Harry Wiley passed away recently, and he was a pillar of the community, pillar of the church at St. Max, and we're going to miss him. Thank you. Dave? Uh, just to uh, congratulate Francine. Uh, pleasure working with her. She does add quite a bit of pizzazz down there in her, I'll say, quiet way. Uh, Scott, welcome to uh, Trial by Fire. And thank you for the turnout and the presence and getting everything squared away on the uh, slight problem we had Monday. Thanks, Dave. Rob? Uh, 
once again, echoing uh, the other trustees' comments, congratulations to Rudy on the completion of the coursework, and uh, we'd like to see that, that uh, our staff is uh, looking to better themselves, and that's great. Also, uh, for the hard work on Monday, Scott and others, uh, congratulations on the completion of your first crisis. And uh, thank you to Francine for all she's done in the last year, and congratulations on her first year. And I don't think there are any holidays that I have to wish coming up. Is it like an Arbor Day or something coming? Uh, okay, well, <laughs> happy whatever for the next month. Charlie. Uh, I'd also like to congratulate Rudy and Francine. Um, and uh, also express appreciation for the staff for responding to the emergency this past Monday. Um, and also would like to uh, echo uh, Nick's condolences to the Wiley family. Um, mm -hmm. Great family, years of commitment to the community here and in other places, and uh, just sad at his passing. Thank you. Great. All right. Uh, just to add a few comments to that, again, uh, Congrats to Francine, and thank you for a year of service already. Hard to believe. Uh, she does a great job down there. and Always a smiling face when I come through the door, so great to have her at the front desk. And uh, thanks to Scott and all the rest of the staff for everything they did to uh, get us squared away and avoid any even more uh, damage to the environment. So great job, gentlemen, and uh, we thank you for everything you do. And with that, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Seconded. All in favor of adjourn. We're adjourned. <laughs>